Uh, in this first mini video, I will provide you some information to be able to answer to question number one of the game How does our planet work climate? Here is Hélène Garonac. Question number one is What are trade winds? Before talking about trade winds, we will try to understand what affects the climate. Obviously, the climate is influenced by the amount of solar energy received in a region on the Earth. How the Earth warms up? Look at this figure. The Earth is colored in green, the atmosphere in blue. The equator is here. There is the Earth's rotation axis. Consider the radiation of the Sun to be yellow with brown arrows and check for the ones approaching the equator. The rays are going through the atmosphere and reach the terrestrial surface indicated here in red. If we consider the same amount of solar energy reaching this time the Earth in polar regions, rays will go through the atmosphere and will reach the surface of the Earth over a larger region. This implies that solar radiation is stronger at the equator compared to polar regions. You can visualize this on the map created by scientists and presented here, a map of solar energy received at the Earth's surface. The legion can be read this way. Red means a lot of energy reaching the Earth's surface in watt per meter square. The equator receives the largest values, expressed here in orange to red colors. Blue to violet colors, meaning the lowest values are indeed observed in polar regions. The climate is thus influenced by the amount of solar energy received at the, surfa at the surface of the Earth. This energy will be unequally absorbed. Oceans and continents warm up differently. Differences in temperature from one region to another lead to the existence of atmospheric circulation, air movements, meaning winds. Some winds are vertical, ascend in altitude or descend to the ground. Others are horizontal, parallel to the surface. The wind carries warm or cold air on the planet. It also carries humidity, creating clouds, rain showers, storms, hurricanes. So, winds can be dry, humid, warm, or cold, depending where they come from. They will, as for the sun, influence the regional climate. Look at the figure on the left. It shows, in a simple manner, the distribution of the main winds observed on the Earth's surface. All the winds exist and can be added. Here is the North Pole, here the South Pole. You can see that the equator, at the equator, we have an equatorial trough. That is, the wind is very weak there. When going away from the equator, to the north or to the south, please observe the symmetry on both sides of the equator. We find winds called trade winds. The trade winds are coming from the east and going to the west. They come from northeast in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, these winds come from the southeast, but they always come from the east and go to the west, east to the west. Other winds which influence climates are the westerlies, blowing from the west. In the northern hemisphere, from the southwest. In the southern hemisphere, these winds are from the northwest. And we find the polar easterlies that come from the east, as do the trade winds. Northeast or southeast, depending on the hemisphere. The atmospheric circulation is present on the ground, but also in altitude. Here we take the same figure, but with some additional details. 
you can find again the trade winds, the westerlies, the polar easterlies. You can notice some cells here. The Adley cells, the Ferrell cells, the polar cells on both hemispheres. I will briefly explain what is going on between the ground and the altitude. At the equator, the warm air, which is less dense, ascends in altitude, as shown by the arrows. When in altitude, it goes either toward the North Pole or toward the South Pole. Let's take the example when it is directed to the North Pole. A fraction of the wind in altitude will cool enough to descend to the surface around a 30 degree latitude. When back on the ground, winds go south to the equator and indeed close the Adler cell. The wind descending at a 30 degree latitude can also go to the north. It will form the Ferrell cell while ascending again to the altitude at about 60 degrees. We also have the polar cells. Don't forget that the Earth turns on itself around its rotation axis. This rotation has impact on the wind directions by diverting them from their original direction. Hence, winds will be diverted on the right in the northern hemisphere and on the left in the southern hemisphere. And this is due to the Earth's rotation. There is a Coriolis force. Here are other influences on climate. The climate is influenced by the proximity of a large water body, for example, an ocean. Here is a figure explaining what happens for a town located near the ocean. During a sunny day, the town and the air above will be strongly warm. The ocean nearby will take more time to warm up as the air above which stay fresh longer. This fresh and humid air will blow over the coast and the town and provide an oceanic characteristic to this region. We speak in this case of a sea breeze. When looking at the effect of the altitude, please look at the figure here. Imagine a mass of air that goes from west at the left of the slide to the east on the right of the slide. This air encounters a chain of mountains and will ascend in altitude to rise over it. While ascending, the air cools. If it is humid, clouds form and some rain fall on the windward side of the mountain. The air will go over the summit of the mountain and descend on the other side. While going down, the air warms up. It is less humid since it lost some rain before. A dry climate prevails on the leeward side of the mountain. A last concept I would like to talk about in this video is about the difference between weather and climate. When we speak about weather or its science, meteorology, you will probably think of temperature quantity of rain, quantity of snow, duration of sunshine, etc. These variables characterize the weather today, tomorrow, or the weekend. When considering the climate or its science, climatology, we are using the same variables, but this time over a period of 30 years or more. It gives maps of climates at a planetary or regional scale. Here is the end of the first mini-video. 
You can find all the videos about this climate game on the blog at the address jeclimat.blogspot.ca. Have a nice day.